New movies out this week include... Great week. Anatomy of a Fall, which is the new film by uh, director and co-writer Justin Triet, who in May became only the third woman to win the Palme d'Or at Cannes after Jane Campion for The Piano. Welcome to New Zealand, where it's, where raining. it's raining. always. And Julie DeCorno for the film which you describe as She's Having Sex with a Car. Oh, <laughs> why, would, why would anyone do that? It, it's a film, it's not real. Oh. So this stars the brilliant Sandra Huller, whose name incidentally has an umlaut over the U, who career-makingly got a Kermode Award for Requiem in 2006. That was, that was a very important thing Really was. Went on to star in Miranda Day's Tony Erdman. She's also in Jonathan Glazer's Zone of Interest, which of course is a very big awards contender coming soon. So in Anatomy of a Fool, she plays Sandra Voiter, who we meet in a remote uh, home in Grenoble, trying to conduct an interview with a journalist because she's a writer. In the background, we hear the sounds of the Bacow Rhythm and Steel Band's cover of 50 Cent's Pimp playing on repeat, getting louder and louder. We have no idea where this sound is coming from, but it, in, it, it becomes loud enough that the interview that she's trying to do with this journalist has to stop. The interviewer gets up and leaves, gets in her car, and Sandra's son, who uh, is blind, uh, goes out for a walk with his dog. When he returns he finds the body of his father, Samuel, on the floor in a pool of snowy blood. He seems to have fallen from the window of the attic, which is where the noise of that uh, music was coming from. Apparently, he was playing the music loudly on repeat, possibly to annoy his wife, possibly to stop the interview. But he has a gash on the side of his head that the investigators say, well, this looks like this. He was hit with a blunt object before he fell from the window. And the only person in the house was his wife. So therefore, she is suspected of murder. And the rest of the film is basically an investigation of her dealings with um, her lawyer friend, Vincent, who says that they should claim that he committed suicide. And the court proceedings, during which, for example, at one point, a witness, which is the husband's therapist, says, well, he told me that you were terrible to him, that you suffocated him, that you basically, you stole your ideas from him. And... You bullied your husband. Here is a clip of her responding to that accusation. You, you come here, okay, with your, maybe your opinion, and you tell me who Samuel was and what we were going through. But what you say is just, uh, it is just a little part of the whole situation, you know. I mean, sometimes, sometimes a couple is kind of a chaos and everybody is lost, no? And sometimes we fight together and sometimes we fight alone and sometimes we, we fight against each other, that happens. And I think it's possible that Samuel needed to see things the way you described them, but if, if I'd been seeing a therapist, he could stand here too and say very ugly things about Samuel, but would those things be true? So that's Sandra Huller, who is German, who during the course of the film three, speaks three languages, her own, French, because of where she lives and, uh, and, and her husband, and English, as you heard in that clip. And she switches between the languages and the, the switching between the languages becomes part of the story, partly because sometimes she's trying to explain herself in one language and then moves to another language because it's, it's impossible to use that particular language to do it. And secondly, because it's to do with she's displaced, she's living in a country in which she is having to use different languages, and also because it kind of creates layers, covering. I think the word that the director used was it, it creates sort of, you know, masks, that, so you can't quite see who she is. So Trey and her writing partner, Arthur Harari, originally called this, when they first announced it, a Hitchcockian procedural thriller. The director also said she wanted to use the courtroom to explore the minutiae of a character and their relationships, and that she was partly inspired very partly, by the Amanda Knox case, by the way in which we bring assumptions to what somebody should look like and we make assumptions about their guilt or innocence mm -hmm. on the basis of how they present. There's also, and this has been repeated quite a lot, famously on the set, she refused to tell Sandra Huller whether the character was guilty or innocent. She said, I'm not having that discussion with you. This mm. is the script. This is how it works. I think the film is brilliant. I thought that the ambiguity is sustained to the point that it really makes you question your own presumptions. There's something about 
uh, Sandra Huller's performance, quite apart from that, she's a magnificent actress, that she's on the one hand completely readable. I mean, you saw just from that clip, she looks like she is really struggling to mm -hmm. construct that sentence right before you. Uh, you and I were talking about the way in which Obama, you can hear the thinking, the thought that goes into the, the grammar of a sentence. But also something which is kind of removed, something which seems to be almost detached, like it, it, almost emotionally disengaged. And, you know, it makes you, do we vilify successful women? Do we, um, her husband was a writer, but he didn't have her success. Um, there are subplots. There's a tape of an argument which she had with her husband, which her husband recorded. And he recorded it as inspiration for what he was writing. I was reminded of a story about Abel Ferrara, the director, recording an argument that he constructed with his wife because he was trying to he was trying to write a script about an argument the you know the, the theft of ideas or the alleged theft of ideas a confusion over what the young child did hear what he didn't hear what he believes what he doesn't believe and the more you get into the detail the more you realize that what's actually happening is you are making a judgment based on based on what you just think emotionally and to me that's kind of what the core of it is. I think to other people, it will be about many different things. It's edge of your seat stuff. I mean, it's the Hitchcockian comparison is good, but I think it's more than that. I think it's completely engrossing. You, you can... You can feel your brain firing on all cylinders all the way through as you're sort of scouring the the screen for clues and for, you know, I thought it was just terrific. It, I, it, it, it's quite a long film and I never felt for one minute that it was anything other than exactly the length it's meant to be. It sounds almost old fashioned in the way you, in, in, you know, yeah, yeah. in, in well, a good way in yes. its construction. Well, making that Hitchcockian comparison, obviously, you know, b b people compare things to Hitchcock quite casually, as we know, but uh, it, it, it is, on the one hand, an old-fashioned courtroom drama, and on the other hand, it is a fantastically modern drama about the way in which we judge people, the way in which we bring our presumptions to the table. Believe me, one of the films of the year. Loved it. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as we enjoyed making it. While you're here, check out all the other videos because they're cool too, aren't they? Yeah, and if you want to keep up to date with everything Kermit and Mayo's take, then check out our social channels. I mean, why wouldn't you? I mean, I, I would. I have done. Excellent.